We'll start right over here. Hey, Norm. Hi, how are you? Great. Uh, now that you are a author, um, can you tell us a little bit about your favorite books? What are my favorite books of all time? Favorite books in general, all time. Um, my favorite book is uh, Search for Lost Time. Uh, my favorite American book is um, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. I, I love Russian literature, and that's what I read mostly. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, just the standard stuff. You know, I, I don't like Dostoevsky, but I like the, the actual good writers. <laughs> I know. What do you like? What do you like to read? Oh. No, I like to read? Yeah. Um, you know, Dear Foster Wallace? Oh, yeah, I'm reading Infinite Jest right now. That's my favorite novel. Wow, that's how coincidental. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good, huh? Oh, I'm glad I'm reading it. Oh, thank you. Sometimes I give up on books, but I won't give up on that one. Because it's so big. <laughs> Sometimes big books make me sleepy. <laughs> uh, do you think it's possible to be a success? Oh, <laughs> do you think it's possible to be a successful stand-up comedian without being on social media today? Like, if you're an aspiring social uh, stand-up comic nowadays, do you have to be kind of like a social media whore? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> like, you know, that's my question. Um, I gotcha, yeah. Um, I don't know, man, because I'm, I'm just an old man. And uh, when I came up, computers were different. <laughs> they were big, they would fill the whole room. And you would ask it questions, and then it would say either yes, no, but if you ask it like an imponderable question, it would say, this does not compute. <laughs> and smoke. <laughs> and spit from the computer. <laughs> now, I think you probably have to be a, I don't know if you have to be a social media whore, but you have to be a, a whore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not smart enough for that. Norm. Um, sorry. Oh, hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, how are you? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, I was wondering about the moth joke and the dolphin joke, the Alonzo and O'Brien joke. Um, I've watched like, an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> I was just wondering, like, going into those story jokes, you know, those shaggy dogs or whatever, um, was there an, like, an agenda that you would steering away from, like what exponent things you guys were going to talk about, and would well, you just have you on the show just be like calm and just tell jokes because you know, you don't know you anything. Well, when Conan started, no one would go on the show. <laughs> and I started on Saturday Night Live the same time that Conan started his talk show. And so he, he wasn't that successful, so he'd always follow me and go, the lady with the potato chips canceled. You know, and I fell in, you know. And uh, so a man only has so many stories, so I had my one. And <laughs> I told that on the first show. But the way that, the, like, for instance, like the moth joke, I was on Conan, you know, and he said, you know, you're going to be on one segment. So I did this segment. And then at the end of the segment, he goes, you gotta do another segment. I'm like, but I got nothing to say. <laughs> and then I remember Colin Quinn told me this joke uh, that, that said like a moth was into a podiatrist's office. And uh, he says, well, I have all these problems. And the podiatrist goes, I have to, why did you come in here? And he goes, the light is on. <laughs> and so I said, uh, Maybe I'll do that joke, but that joke only takes eight seconds. <laughs> so I know a thing has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's what I've always heard, even though I don't fucking understand what the fuck it is. <laughs> That's why I put a big, long middle. <laughs> but yeah, with Conan, you know, I, I just... What I do is, when you have to, in, in, uh, in these talk shows, they have these people called pre-interviewers, and you tell them the story, and they go to the host, the 
and they tell the host the story, and then you tell the host the story that he's already heard. <laughs> so you feel like you're a goddamn fool. <laughs> so instead, I would make up stories. <laughs> and then so, you know, they would go, I right, understand you got a haircut. And I'd go, no, I don't got no haircut. <laughs> So what's the third thing you said? Chris Bartlett? Yes. Yeah. And these were guys who uh, or these are guys who are very insecure or very uh, focused on what they do and very passionate. Uh, and I was just wondering if, if you feel that way uh, sometimes about your own because it's so effortless in your delivery and in kind of just putting it out there. Uh, so I'm huh. curious about that. Um, yeah, well, a lot of times people will say, like, I'm very calm and everything, but I'm not calm at all. Like, I'm frightened all the time, and I think of them dying all the time. And uh, that's my little hobby. <laughs> so, uh, but ruminating on your own mortality can be exhausting. And uh, so, yeah, you know, you have to figure out you have to figure out some way to not do that. Um, but I'm not insecure at all. You know what, I'm, I'm kinda, I know I suck as an actor and shit, but then, like I have low self-esteem, but I have a, a low other people's esteem. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that one, if I can do it, I can do it. <laughs> Are you going to ask a question? Oh. Hey, Norm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Norm. Oh, hi. How are you? Um, I, I heard a story once. I was always wondering if it was true. The, the first job that Dennis Miller gave you. It, is it true that you send in one joke? Yes, it is true. <laughs> you heard that, sir? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Dennis Miller had a talk show right after he left. Uh, it wasn't the HBO talk show. It was this tribute talk show after he left Saturday Night and uh, you know, trying to get writers. <laughs> so he, uh, so I, my manager said, you know, write once a hundred jokes you know, for the week. So I went to this uh, little, you know, restaurant and I'd read the newspaper and uh, I didn't read the fucking newspaper. And, uh, and I got all sleepy and then I'm like, no, 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 this seems funny to me. And uh, so I'd write like real bad, I had real bad jokes. So anyways, I wrote 50 horrible, bad jokes. And then one joke that was okay. So I said, fuck it, I'll just send him the one joke that's okay. Because I thought he won't be able to find it amongst all this direct. So uh, I sent him one joke. And then he thought I did it on purpose. He's like, hey, you're like Andy Kaufman, baby. <laughs> really, I'm not a right joke. And the joke, the other joke is it was, uh, and what's his name was being sent, Jeffrey Dahmer was on trial. And the joke was, uh, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer's on trial. And I feel his defense may be a little weak. They started it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I also really want to jam Michael Vincent. Also, my producer goes, "He's dead." I'm like, "I don't think he's dead." He's like, "He's dead." And then, you know, you can check things on Wikipedia. You know, it turns out he's not dead. But uh, so one week, and he's like, "He's like, I can get anybody." That's my producer. Says, I can get anybody. And uh, so I said, "How about Robert Blake?" I'll get him. And then the week came, and it was uh, it was Fred Stoller. <laughs> syndrome thing. Uh, <laughs> he was talking to Robert Blake on the phone. And he, you know, I was trying to convince him, you know, to do the show. And then at the end of the thing, he goes, listen, unintentionally, but stupidly, he goes, listen, I gotta go, I'll phone you back. I have to go to dinner with my wife. <laughs> for those of you who don't remember Robert Blake. <laughs> He had the oddest uh, alibi Robert Blake. <laughs> he actually got up and he's like, I didn't kill my wife. I was uh, in a restaurant getting my gun. <laughs> I might possibly have killed my wife. By the time my wife was, was shot by a gun, I was in a restaurant getting a gun. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. You never had a gun. Thanks for taking the pictures of it. God, I love pictures of me, especially when I'm an old fat man. <laughs> Is this on? Okay. Um, I love the Burt Reynolds impression you do. <laughs> so, good so, about A, like the genesis of it. B, has Burt, have you met Burt? Has he yeah. come at it? And, and just while I have this, over the 41 years of SNL, I'm wondering, besides Farley, going back to day one, who are the players that really you most admire? Um, well, when I was a kid, I liked, uh, my favorite was Dan Aykroyd by a million miles. And I always wondered why Chevy was a star, because I thought, God damn, Dan Aykroyd can do anybody, and he's so funny and stuff. And, uh, and uh, the reason I did, I want to do Burt Reynolds, because you know, I loved him when I was a kid. I don't really do impressions, but guys who I really like, I can do. And guys that are funny, it's kind of a cheat, but... You know, you do an impression of them, and then you're funny because they're funny. You know what I mean? So uh, I always used to watch one of the Tonight Show, and I said, I gotta give him a sketch. So then I, I uh, stole this sketch called Halfwits from Second City, and I turned that into a, a Celebrity Jeopardy. And I felt really bad for stealing the sketch. And so I waited until Mark, Mark Short was coming on. I said, Mark, can I, can I do this sketch? I, you know, I stole it from Halfwits. And then he said, oh, I didn't write it. Eugene Levy wrote it. And I, I had to phone Eugene Levy and ask him. And he was a gentleman about it and said that uh, I could do it. But then when I did it, you know, Lauren picks out the wardrobe. He had to, like the, the, this uh, gray hair and gray beard and stuff. And I was like, no, I want to play with him from the 70s. <laughs> then, it's kind of odd. But, and all the time I did it, nobody ever commented <laughs> that the three celebrities, one of them was from 50 years ago. <laughs> oh, Bert, yeah, no, I met him, and uh, god damn, that guy was funny. He just told me the funniest stories, and uh, yeah, he wanted to, uh, he said he wanted to, uh, <laughs> this is a story to him. He said, you know, he could all these girls when he was young, you know, he was so handsome. And he said one time he was in a hotel, <laughs> and this beautiful blonde, and she said, like, just come up to my room, you know, I have a lot of sex. So he goes up to her room, and they're kissing on the bed and stuff, and then she, he said she whispered in his ear, and she said, I'll be right back. I have to take a dump. <laughs>
Okay, we have time for two more questions before two we begin more. the signing, and we'll start right with this gentleman here. Hi, Norm. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I've read the first like, uh, 60, 70 pages, and this is genuinely one of the most interesting books I've read. It's sure. really wonderful, like where you, you can, it's very hard to tell what's true and what's not at times, because I know that there are difficult times and you don't want to laugh at something that's difficult, and yet it seems like it, there's a very, it's very intentional uh, to, uh, to, to bend the truth. And I want to know how much of that came from difficult, did you try to write a very straight memoir and was that difficult or did you initially come into it knowing that uh, you wanted to have more creative? At first I tried to write a straight memoir, like, but when, when you look at your life, you know, you know, somebody once said, uh, when you look at, <laughs> I think I think Alba said, somebody once said, Shakespeare. <laughs> but, uh, um, what was the movie that happened? What was your question? Uh, uh, did you try to start out trying to write a straight memoir? Uh, yes, I did, yeah. And then uh, I realized, like, uh, so little happens in life. First of all, Mostly, it's the finding and consumption of food. <laughs> and uh, so you wake up, eat your frankenberries, <laughs> and then you find your buddy, hey, I wish you got a ham sandwich. Like, you know, after the frankenberries digest. And then, uh, you know, you uh, <laughs> I gotta go to the store, man, buy me some food. <laughs> so uh, your, life, uh, your life is just a set of mundane, uh, Things and so I read a whole bunch of biographies, and I really have contempt for celebrity biographies <laughs> because you know I feel there's real authors, you know, that work and are talented, and then they, you know, and then they look at the best idol list of fucking Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> so I always imagine them in their cold water flask. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to call it. <laughs> Just like angry and you know, putting the news up. And stuff. So, so, anyways, I tried a whole bunch of ways of doing it, and then I thought, you know, I could. Uh, I didn't want to libel anybody. I didn't want. I mean, I, I, I didn't care about libeling them, but I didn't want to be sued for libeling. <laughs> so I thought if I put if I put actual true things in it. Uh, but surrounded them by fanciful uh, falsehoods, then uh, they couldn't say, uh, you know, hey, you slandered me, because I, what are you talking about? The devil's in the book. Like the actual, <laughs> actual devil. <laughs> actual devil makes an appearance in my book. <laughs> so, uh, so that was my plan. That's my scheme. Schemes always trump plans. <laughs> I always remember that. <laughs> Is there one more? Hi, Norm. Hi, finally a yeah, woman. woman. <laughs> it's about time, I say. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, looking through the first few pages of your book, so uh, far, so good. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> people named Charles Manson in the world. <laughs> Just like there's different people named Jesus Christ. <laughs> and yet, if you met a guy named Jesus Christ, not like you're going to follow him and become a goddamn fisher of men. <laughs> but anyways, I, I, I assume that when you've gotten to the dedication. <laughs> dedicated to Charles Manson, not that one. Because <laughs> I knew a guy, his name wasn't Charles Manson, but I knew a guy, uh, <coughs> I, knew, I knew a guy whose name was the same as a notorious uh, serial killer. And, uh, uh, man, he got a lot of ribbon about that. <laughs> 